Let's talk about gold. This has been a bizarre period for precious metals. Regular viewers know that I actually am a big fan of holding some gold as a kind of insurance policy. It's against inflation or economic chaos. Historically, it's been very effective, but in recent years, it's really blown up in our faces. Last year, we had rampant inflation, and gold didn't do much for you. I thought the culprit was crypto. The people who'd normally be hiding their money in gold were instead buying cryptocurrencies so, uh, it, because Bitcoin and Ethereum, well, they were billed as safe storeholds of value. Never mind that it wasn't true. But this year, the whole crypto ecosystem, as you know, has collapsed, meaning gold doesn't have much competition. And we've got an insanely high inflation readings, worst in decades. Yet gold's basically flat for the year. You could argue it's trading like the Fed will have no problem beating inflation. That's the bull thesis. But it simply hasn't been working as a hedge against inflation in recent years. And I actually don't know why that would suddenly change now. In fact, ever since March, gold prices have been just hammered. A real ugly downturn. So is it time to finally throw in the towel and just give up on gold as a storeholder on anything? Not so fast. Tonight, we're going off the charts with Larry Williams. Yep, the legendary technician, market historian, who's been doing this since I was a zit-faced teenager. And I did. See this right here? I don't know if I covered it with my makeup. Larry's written more than a dozen books, and he's created a host of his own proprietary indicators, all of which you can find on his website, IReallyTrade.com, and which are used constantly every day on CNBC. On top of that, his recent track record, it's just it's ridiculous. He called the COVID bottom in 2020 when nobody else wanted to touch the stock market. Then, most recently, he called the, the incredible latest bottom earlier this summer, right before the market took off. Yeah, he nailed this one, lock, stock, and barrels. That's why I keep going back to him. In short, Williams is great at spotting moments where everyone else is throwing in the towel, which means it's time to buy, because everybody who is going to sell will have already sold. And he thinks we're approaching that exact same kind of capitulation moment in the precious metal. Larry points out the general public has had a miserable track record of calling tops and bottoms. Terrible. And that's especially true when you're looking at gold. So I want you to take a look at the weekly chart. This is the weekly action in the precious metal going back to 2014, paired with the CFTC's Commitments of Trading Report. That's that hot report I like to talk about uh, with data on the bottom. Now, remember, this report is a fabulous tool. The CFTC uh, tracks the future positions of small speculators, meaning home gamers, large speculators, meaning money managers, and commercial hedgers, meaning companies that actually work with the underlying commodity, gold miners. Right now, we're looking at the small gold specul speculators in gold. Okay, right here. Because Williams finds that when the small speculators get too bullish, it's almost always a sign that we're near the top. But when they get too bearish, it's almost always a sign that we've gotten the bottom of our on our own hands. According to the latest commitment of traders report, that's the cot report. OK, uh, small speculators are net long ninety two thousand six hundred ninety contracts for gold, which get this is their smallest long position since May of 2019, right before we got a major boost in gold. By the way. Uh, at gold's recent peak in March, these small speculators were long 279,000 contracts, their largest net long position in four years right here. So we absolutely know that they are on the wrong side of the trade. Now, as Williams is saying, you, you should look at the small speculator contingent and just do the opposite of what they're, they're doing. OK, that would be too good. But he points out in the last nine years, whenever their net long position in gold has been this low, the actual metal has rallied. And the, and the best selling points all came at moments when they had large long positions. You know, so you can just see this, right? They didn't own a lot. And then, boom, look at this. Look at the way it spikes whenever they didn't own a lot. But it's not just the public that's giving up on gold. Take a look at the weekly chart of the gold futures. With Larry's valuation model on the bottom, this model shows the spread between gold and the U.S. dollar. Right now, his model shows that gold is very undervalued versus the greenback, which we know has been very strong. Something's been a real reliable arbiter of gold rallies in the past. See, it's why. Keep in mind, one big reason for gold's recent underperformance is that the dollar's been so strong. And this is yet another commodity that's denominated in dollars. But you know what might be more important than currency fluctuations? Oil. Williams has a very interesting argument here. He says gold bugs have been eviscerated because they expected the precious metal would rally 
in response to high inflation numbers. But in reality, when you look at the history, he points out that gold is generally more responsive to the price of oil than to any other inflation metric, like the consumer price index. So take a look at this weekly gold chart with Larry's forecast for gold in red. This red line is actually just the price of oil pushed forward by eight weeks. He loves to do that, and I think it's very responsive. This has been a very powerful tool for predicting the price of gold in the, last, in the past. Look how closely they trade together. William says it's his roadmap. And based on the action oil pushed forward by eight weeks, he thinks now is the time to buy gold. His forecast says it should be ready to rally here. So where do, where do I come down? I know it's been very tough to bet on gold this year. But right now, the charts may finally be on your side. And boy, does that ever make a difference. Here's the bottom line. The charts, as interpreted by the legendary Larry Williams, suggest that the general public is giving up on gold on mass, and he thinks that that makes it the perfect entry time to do some buying. My view, you don't bet against this guy when it comes to spot and bottoms. He may be the best I have ever seen. Let's go to Keith in Georgia. Keith. Hey, hello, Jim. Hey, I'm a long I'm good, listener. Keith. How about you? I'm a first-time caller, and I want to thank you for all you do for all the, the retail investors out there. You're awesome. I hope you never retire. Thank you. Sure try hard. Thank you. Okay, this company, it reports next week. Um, what's your thoughts on Barrick Gold? Well, look, if you want to own a gold stock, it's the one to buy. It's the best-run company, but gold's been a bad investment. I have not backed away from Barrick as the stock to buy because it's certainly, believe it or not, done better than most of them. But uh, that's you have to be a gold bug to buy the stock of Barrick. Let's go to Nick in Colorado, please. Nick. Hey, Jim. This is Nick in hot, hot, hot Colorado. Well, we got the same problem going here. What's happening? <laughs> Wanted to get your opinion on Bail SA. It has a dividend of a buck forty-five, a yield of eleven twenty-five, and wanted to know if it was a good place to park some funds. You're not supposed to go uh, buying that stock going into recession. I think that even the bulls still admit that a recession is a possibility. We can't let this one day influence our thinking that it's off the table, even though you know I'm more bullish than almost everybody on air. So I say let's stay away from ballet. All right, the chart suggests that gold could be ready to rally here, and it might be the perfect time to do some buying. Hey, much more man money had, including my exclusive with Thermo Fisher. And reporting a beat and raised quarter last week, I'm going to dig into the numbers and uncover the strengths with the company CEO who's made us a lot of money. Then oil's pain seems to be tech's gain. But is that warranted? Does it make any sense? I'll give you my take. And all your calls rapid fire in tonight's edition of The Lightning Round. So stay with Kramer.